four, three, two, one. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jill. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm like really good, really excited. I'm jacked. I'm psyched. Jack. I'm thrilled. Okay. <laughs> really keen on this idea that you and I came up with. Really keen on it. So, I thank everyone for tuning in to the Jack and Jill Art and Culture Tell All. And what in the world is that, you ask, right? Yeah. What is it? Well, here's your answer. Okay. In this time, there are fears and insecurities of artists and just so many questions as to, because life is so different, you know, we're not networking, we're not showing in exhibitions, we're not meeting hundreds of people. Um, working your business is really, really difficult, not really difficult, but different. So how do we do that and be, continue to be successful? So what you and I came up with is we are going to interview, you know, some of the best in the field. Mm -hmm. We're going to interview people that will answer our questions. We're going to dig deep, right? We're right. going to get those questions answered. So the people that, and you will go into this a bit further, who they are that we've got mm -hmm. lined up so far. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of people that we are looking to interview are curators, museum directors, designers, architects, like art collectors, um, stagers, art promoters, art influencers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are art coaches out there. There are so many people that we can interview and learn everything we need to learn, especially during this time, because like I said, everything is so different. So these people are going to help guide us for now mm -hmm. and forever. What are the steps in which we should be taking? What, what's the homework? What do we have to be doing? It's wonderful to paint. It's fabulous to paint and create. But you know what's really great? Is to sell your art. Is to know how to market it, know how to use Instagram, know who the influences are, know who the people are in the field in which to work with. And that's what you, and we're gonna learn a lot too. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. It's a great thing for everybody. Now I know that you have, you and I have lined up a lot of guests. We and have, you're gonna yeah. tell us who they are. And just give us a few if you don't mind. Okay. So we've got Sophie Bonnet from ArtServe. She is the chief curator. We've got Ed King. He is the marketing director of ArtServe. We've got George Gatson, who is a public artist and an entrepreneur. Dana, Dana, Dana Tapia, who is the, uh, an art promoter. And she's also the director of communications at um, Dora, what is it called? Yeah, the director of um, Doral, yeah. of the Museum of, of the Doral Museum of Contemporary Arts. So, right. We also have um, Alexis Fedor. Yep. Famous art coach. We have yep. Michael Zavala. Uh huh. Who is an amazing, amazing designer. Yep. And I know we have a few more. So just to kind of give us and give people an idea of the kind of people that we'll be having on and how they'll help us and so forth. Right. Um, so we have a lot to look forward to. We do. So we moving do. along, I'd like to know who you are. I kind of know who you are, but I'd like everyone else to know who you are because you're very special. And I know you've won. You're an award-winning artist. Mm -hmm. You're also an amazing, amazing um, makeup artist for film and TV. And you've been an artist for quite some time. And both of them go really hand in hand because mm -hmm. they're both incredibly creative fields. And they're both actually painting. So talk to us about that and how that all came about. You're okay. back. So going back in time a little bit to the 1980s, I was at um, New York University studying studio art. And while I was there, I had a, like a lot of classes, um, learning uh, different types of art. And I started working with the film students in Tisch because what, I had two goals before I went to NYU. One of them was to become a makeup artist for film and TV to learn special effects. And I also wanted to be an, a painter. So basically by working with the film students, I really learned my craft because I was able to do film after film after film with them. And when they all of a sudden had a commercial or a music video, or they did an independent film themselves, they hired me because I had built a relationship with them. 
And building a re relationships are the most important thing that you can do, not only as a painter, but in my field as a makeup artist. So as I was going along um, building my resume as a makeup artist, I continued to paint and I got my work into some restaurants. I tried to get my work into some galleries, but at that time period, there was no social media. Right. So I kind of put the painting on the back burner in the sense that I stopped trying to market myself and I really just forged ahead and decided, okay, I'm going to go full force with the makeup. So as I built the career, I kept painting when I could. Um, and so to this day, I am still in the film community. I'm in South Florida and I still work as a makeup artist most recently on Mrs. Maisel and Bad Boys for Life, they came here, we worked on those two shows. And then I previously worked on Bad Boys, um, the second one, 17 years ago. So I've got quite the resume with um, celebrities and you know all kinds of stuff that I've done over the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. But I really started painting full force again about four years ago uh, because I had to. It's, it's something that you know, and, and, and you, you, this happened to you as well. It's not something that you can't do. It's something you have to do. Or, or saying can't is not the right word. It's that it's it's a part of you that... You want you know, to do consistently. Yeah, you want to do it consistently. So I have always painted objects. And so behind me, I have my uh, guitar, which is an electric guitar. It doesn't work. So it's just a work of art. It's not functioning. Um, but it can be, you know, it can be put on the wall. It can be displayed the way I have it right now on it. It's actually a piece of sculpture. It is. It's a piece of sculpture. And next to it is a fire extinguisher. Talk about functional art. The fire extinguisher actually works. So a company called Safety USA, they found me on Instagram and they said, can you paint fire, fire extinguishers? And I said, of course I can. Um, I also paint barrels. I also paint shoes. I paint hats. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and painted it. I have three of the fire extinguishers, which are for sale, not only on Safety USA, but you can also purchase them through me. Mm -hmm. And then behind me is another painting, which I'll move over a little bit. This is part of my Time Machine series. Beautiful. And what's really important for artists is to do series. So this series is part of four paintings. And why is it called Time Machine? Because the center painting or rather drawing is a charcoal drawing from 1987 and it got really worn and it, it just, it was sort of fading away. So I realized in order to save it, I wanted to bring it into a new painting and upcycle it. So I glued it in the center and then I worked my way through it and around it with the style that I currently have. And I created a whole new piece over it. And, and and so now I have one piece right. from Time Machine that's in Boca, the Bailey Contemporary Arts Muse right. um, uh, Arts at um, in Pompano Beach. So right. one one of the paintings is actually there right now in the exhibition. So yes, um, any questions? It's interesting because I know you use museum quality um, materials when you I paint. do. I do. So the fact that you say I glued it down, I'm like. Oh, that's not really what she did. She used a golden medium to blah, 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 blah. Um, yes, I love it. It's beautiful. I like the fact that you brought the 20th century piece in the middle, and then you did the 21st century, and then they're all kind of combined and put into one piece, and it makes it like very 3D and right. quite, quite beautiful. Right. Nice and so, so my work itself is I take ancient cultures that are you know feet there so it's faces and it's also the bodies and i bring it into the present day but the cultures themselves so it's not i don't get it from any photographs so everything that comes to me it's almost like it's being channeled through me so when i sit at a blank canvas i'm not hemming and hawing and wondering what's going to happen i just go at it and it just flows right out of me onto the canvas or any of the other three-dimensional objects that i work on so it's very inclusive it's full of community and the warmth comes from the colors that i choose yeah. and the color sort of comes spontaneously too although i must say I have worked on commission with different clients who want to use specific colors and I will work with them with the colors. I have absolutely no problem with that. Then we become a team together and then yeah. it becomes even more special to them. I think so too. Now, 
they're a part of it and it's the colors yeah. that they chose. Right. So I can never tell a client what the design's going to be because it's spontaneous, but they're okay with that. Yeah. So with my work that I do on canvas and then when I paint faces, painting faces is so different because I'm being told how to paint that face. And usually it's coming from a script where I have to break down a script oh, sure. to know how, what the character research, is. like what year, what style. Yeah. Right. And like Mrs. Maisel was a period piece. So we were talking about 1959. So the makeup, the hair, the wardrobe, everything was from that period. So you really have to know what, what, did, what you have to do specifically. And you're told, you know, what to do. So it's not, it's not difficult. Um, it's not a difficult job. It's a fun job. Um, and, but painting is my own thing. It's a hundred percent me. So that's the difference sure. between the two careers. Right, right, right. Get it. So talk about careers. So Jackie, you, let's talk about you. So you have this really interesting past. You, um, you were in the art world for 17 years and then you became this highly successful business owner. Go ahead, take it away. I want to hear all about you. Okay. So. Um, I have not been painting for a very long time. It hasn't even been three years. It's been about two and a half years. Um, I had started in the museum field, being a museum director and a curator, like you said, for, for many, many years. Um, so I was always, you know, when I curate something, I would judge, I would jury, I would say yay, I would say nay. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually formerly a judge and a juror for many, many off Florida exhibitions. Um, and exhibitions that traveled. So it's just very funny that like 20 something years later, I'm being judged, I'm being juried, I'm being told no. Like what? I've been told, you know, okay, yay. But it's like funny, it goes around, comes around, karma's a bitch, but I've done well despite of it. Right. I've had a modicum of success. Um, so those More were than great a modicum. More than a modicum. Thank you. But those were such great years and I got such a wonderful education from starting really low and just educating and educating and, you know, really striving to be the best uh, that I could be and put on the best possible shows for the public. And uh, they were well recognized and that was really cool. And then my business was women's clothing. Mm -hmm. um, it was a great business. I had it for almost seven and a half years. Mm -hmm. Thank God I just recently let it go because look with the COVID. But it was right here in Fort Lauderdale where the Whole Foods uh, Center was. I had a shop there. Mm -hmm. And best time in my life until I picked up a paintbrush. So I pick up a paintbrush on a you know, Sunday rainy, icky afternoon with my daughter just to play like a craft day, right? Right. And like I, for nine hours, I couldn't stop. And I like couldn't stop. And the next day I'm like, let's go get more paints. And she's like, mom, you know, it was just like something to do. I'm like, no. So I would go into work where I was very on my game. Whenever I crossed that threshold of my boutique stash, it was all business. Mm -hmm. Wonderful people working for me. But all of a sudden I start walking into stash and what happens? I'm stuck in the back room watching YouTube videos how to mix acrylic paint. Okay, I got my feet up on the, <laughs> the desk. I, have everyone, I don't care if the whole place burns down. Then I start buying canvases. Huge, you know, I, I paint big, right? So I'm taking them into the store. I'm flinging canvas. The stores get, the counters got paint on it. The floors got paint on it. All of a sudden, the shoes, everything. My husband's like, stop. But you were live painting, though. I was live painting. And then I had my paintings everywhere around the store. You know, forget the poochie dress. Here's a painting. And uh, <laughs> finally, I looked at the woman who was working for me and said, you know what? How would you like a business? Just like, let me take my purse and enjoy. It's great business. God bless you, girlfriend. <laughs> I'm out. And okay. I opened, yeah. And I opened a, a studio. I think it was 12 to 14 or 15 days after that, not really knowing how to paint but knowing that I needed a space with a bunch of paint and I wanted to play. So I jumped in with both feet, left something, which, you know, my husband's like, are you, but you're starting to do so well. I'm like, I'll do well at this too. <laughs> but that's the whole idea in life. You gotta take chances. You have to do something. Take a big chance. Now, tell, now you do everything very mathematically though. So talk to me about yeah. the canvas behind you as an example of how you use math. Okay, so for instance, Blank canvas. What do you do to a blank canvas? You add. Okay, so like in life, because the philosophy of my life, 
is I wake up every day, what do I do? Every day to me is a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. So I add, I add to my day. Mm -hmm. I add all the things I enjoy. Then I take away, I get a phone call with someone, right? They got some negative energy, okay? <laughs> I get an email, negative energy, somebody I don't like, it's delete. You press delete whenever the hell you want. We are adults, right? Right. I'm painting on this. I like this piece, but before I like this piece, there was an area, say, around here that was just like, I don't know what to do with it. I scrape it, I sand it, I gouge it. Um, I'm using my nails. I'm like, I'm getting rid of it because I can't deal with it. Just like in life. Then when I find something I like, for instance, these rectangles, they're multiplied. They're all over the place because I think they're great. Now, the rectangles signify during coronavirus that... There's a little way out in every circle, in every square, in every rectangle, in every shape on my canvases. There's always a way out. They are a maze. Okay, they are all mazes. But the most important thing to know is during this time or any time in life when you're having a difficulty, there's always a way out. You just got to look for it. Right. Meditate on it. Take your time. Mm -hmm. So right now, could I be sitting here in a ball? Right? All upset. I wouldn't like you. Yeah. But there's a lot to be upset about. This is an overwhelming thing. Sure is. Do yeah. I do that and stay in here? Or do I venture out? Okay? And try to figure out another way in which to live my life. So this is actually a pandemic piece. And then it, it's very bright in color and people laugh. Like, that's a pandemic piece? They're supposed to be black and brown. No, there's hope here. This will not be forever. And depending upon your point of view... We make the best of a very bad situation and we just, you know, muddle through and we focus on our career because it takes our mind off everything else. Mm -hmm. And there's so much that we should do. I shouldn't be just be painting like I was nine to 12 hours a day. I should be painting four hours a day, spending three hours a day on my business. Right. And that, that's what we're going to, that's what we're here for. We're here yeah. to for this because... You can paint, and we all want to paint, but we have to tend to our business, and we have to figure it out. And what's the best possible way? Is it Instagram? Is it Facebook? So we're going to find all these answers through our guests. Our guests are going to tell us everything. So yeah. they're not only going to help everyone out there, all of our viewers, but they're going to help us too. I because know. we don't know everything, and we're insecure yeah. too right now. We're feeling you, it. You might be, Jill, but I'll never admit to that. <laughs> so moving right along... You know, there's so, so much, and these people are so generous to give us their time, to give us their expertise, um, and to get it out there. So, like, uh, if anyone wants to be considered for the show, we have an email address at the end. We do. We're looking for anyone that's in the arts, but we're looking for artists, but artists who have really, like, overcome, artists with great stories, artists who have climbed from, like, you know, you know help us to reach where you're at. Exactly. Teach us, artists that are teachers. Right. And speaking of teachers, Jackie and I are both teachers. If anyone oh. wants to use us as teachers, if you'd like That's to learn how to paint, we're here for you. Yes, we, I do. Go ahead. Yeah. No, we, we both teach. And, and if you need a coach, an art coach, we're here for you too. We're done. Yeah, no, I've been having a couple of classes, like I'm 20 feet away. Mm-hmm. We laugh and we have so much fun. And I do intuitive painting. We paint blindly. We paint this. And then we come up with shapes in which to work off of. Right, right. Be very surprised at what you can instinctively and intuitively do to create something. And then, of course, we add, we subtract, and we multiply. Right. Um, so I teach all my tips and tricks and um, it's great, great fun. And I'm teaching now at ArtServe because I am a resident artist of ArtServe. I have the big space in the front when you walk in. And it's a gallery. Uh, it's also a studio. And it's also a place in which I can teach from or I can use any of the other rooms, which are huge. Of course. Um, so this is a good thing for both of us to do during this time, as well as other artists, is to teach by being very mindful of social distancing and mask wearing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a way in which to monetize what you do already know and something to think about. When I'm with my students, I'm sure that they 
feel comfortable because I what a lot what happens to a lot of um, artists or just you know anyone who really wants to draw or paint they get nervous and they start to judge and what I really try to bring to the table is stop judging and just start painting and don't worry about the outcome because like Jackie you can That's add true. you can subtract. It doesn't matter. You can you can gesso over the whole thing and start over if you want to. Because really in the end, it's you. You're the one that needs to be satisfied with what you did. So and then you make the decision. Do I want to put it out in the world? Am I going to post it on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you want to put it? Snapchat. Right. Um, it's limitless as to what you can do with it. But the but the whole point of art is the joy that it brings you. It, and because you're creating, it has purpose and it has meaning. And that's what I bring to the table as a teacher. And I know Jackie does as well. And that's, we want our students to walk away being excited. So when they go home, they're gonna to continue to paint. It's not just about the one class or the two classes, the series of classes that we offer. No, we want you to experience art on your own and understand that you can do it. So, like I know I give homework. I'm sure you give homework. I I Many do. artists don't give homework because they want them to come back the next time. I right. just want them to get better and enjoy it. Absolutely. Like I do. Isn't that is our mission for the entire show is to help artists and to help anyone who else who's viewing this if you're not an artist, but you want to become an artist. The, we're going to help you in every possible way that we can. Right, Jackie? You got it, girlfriend. All right. I think we're done. I think we're fun. Yeah. And I think uh, I don't know anything else that rhymes with un. So I'm <laughs> off. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're done. we're done and I'm very excited and I can't wait for our first guest. Me too. Gonna be, gonna be a winner. I know who it is, but I'm not saying a damn thing. Uh -huh. Secret zip. Can't zip and mwah, adore you. Uh -huh. Adore you too. Call me. I will. Bye, babe. Okay, bye, babe.